Hai Kangca. Hi guys. Hi Kangca, how are you? Rajeshwari, how are you? Good, good. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. So maybe we'll give it another minute to see if more people are joining. Shall we start? Yes. Okay. So who's going to do the first one? Uh, can I do it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Give it a try. Okay. So um, according to uh, this plot, the first one, uh, here we can see 75% blast cells and 19% uh, granulocytes, some monocytes, no monocytes, and 3% lymphocytes. And when we are going in more detail, so in second uh, plot, CD33, CD34 negative, CD117 negative, HLA DR negative, mm -hmm. and the second row, CD, sorry, CD38 uh, positive, CD11C negative. CD13, CD34, both negative. CD14, negative. CD64, also negative. Okay. And here, the third one, CD7, uh, positive. CD3, negative. CD8, CD4, both negative. Uh, CD2, moderately positive. CD3, negative. And cytoplasmic tube shows uh, CD3 uh, positive or uh, cyto TDT uh, uh, moderately positive. Okay. Cyto CD3 uh, 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 positive and CD5 also positive. Cyto CD3 positive, CD1A negative. And here the, the last cyto TDT moderately positive. C, uh, cyto MPO negative. Okay. So what do you think this is? Uh, uh, in my, uh, it's uh, D -A, uh, T A L L. Yeah, okay. So this uh, is a T A L L. Uh, yeah. Do you have anything else to add? Um, no. no, okay. Okay, this is fair. This is a TALL. So you see the blast in the blast gate here. Uh, one thing to remember is when we see TALL, um, they may not always be in the blast gate. Sometimes TALL blasts can have more CD45. They may be actually very close to the lymphocyte gate and actually sometimes some cases are uh, in the lymphocyte gate too. So that can happen, keep that in mind. And um, they can be very often CD34 negative. So like this case, it is negative for CD34 and um, they don't have any myeloid markers like 117, CD33, CD13. And uh, we'll discuss it in another case why that is important. Then CD38 is positive. They can, like, like in BLAST, 
And CD7, CD7 is consistently positive in TALL. So never call anything as a TALL if CD7 is negative. So um, I've never seen this in any book, but I was taught that way to not call anything as TALL if CD7 is not expressed. So CD7 is usually bright. It can sometimes be kind of vaguely positive, but it is always positive. And four and eight, there are different types of TALL. Four and eight can be negative, mostly um, from the cells arising from the bone marrow. Um, if the ALL is arising from the stem cells in the bone marrow, then they, they are often four and eight negative. If they are arising from the thymus, they are often four and eight positive, uh, double positive. Very rarely, they can be either four positive. They, uh, the literature and the book says eight positive things happen, but I have not seen one. Um, none of my colleagues have seen one, but Keep it in mind, it can happen. That does not rule it out. And uh, two is also often positive, but the intensity usually varies. And cytoplasmic CD3 has to be positive. And to call cytoplasmic CD3 as positive, you have to compare it with the intensity of the background T cells um, because CD, cytoplasmic CD3 can often be noisy and you might mistake um, you know, partial expression as positive, but you have to compare it to the intensity of the T cells to make sure it is positive. And uh, here the immaturity marker that we have is TDT. Five can or cannot be positive, not a reliable marker, but in this case it is positive. 1A, TDT, CD99, and CD34 are the immaturity, immaturity markers that can help. Uh, one or more will be usually positive. And this one, MPO is negative. So this is a straightforward case of a classic mm -hmm. TALL. This is how it will look. Yes. can you please repeat CD, cytoplasmic CD3, what you said, and just show exactly like what you were saying for cytoplasmic, cytoplasmic CD3? CD3, to call it positive, you have to compare it with the intensity of the T cells, the background okay. normal T cells. Because CD3 can actually be noisy sometimes, and uh, it might look like it is partially positive. Uh, we'll have cases in the later uh, that I can show you. I, I might have one case where I can show you that. It might look like it is positive, but always compare it to the intensity of the background T cells. If the uh, intensity of the population reaches that intensity, you can see it is positive. Okay. So, okay. Any other questions? Yeah, just in this case, we don't have any background uh, T cells, do we? So, right, we, because we, so we don't have any background T cells in this case. So, how are we um, judging the cytoplasmic CG3? Right, so we actually might have some here, okay. but so the four, uh, okay. yeah, but we don't really have a population in this case that is brighter than the CD3. Or maybe it's masked by it. Okay. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? All right. So we'll go to case number two. I can take two, two okay. to four, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. People can jump in if they like. No, I'm not an expert. I'm just trying to um, participate. Okay, Please so go ahead. no problem. Okay, so for case two, um, so we'll start with the uh, CD45 side scatter. Uh, CD4, the uh, the population, the population of I can see lymphocytes, and there's very my there's no uh, monocytes. Uh, the orange is a granular site, and then the light blue aqua uh, in the blast gate, that's what I'm interested in, which is uh, DIM CD45. Uh, so this population is 34 partial, 33 partial, uh, CD117 neg, negative, uh, it's CD15 negative, so and CD38 positive, CD13 negative, CD11B uh, negative. So, so far only CD33 has been, po has been partially positive. Um, and so going down, uh, it's CD64 negative, CD14 negative, these are monocyte marker, it's surface CD3 negative, uh, and then um, CD7 uh, positive. When I saw that it was CD34 partial and then surface, I'm, I was thinking that it's an early, it's a, it's a T cell, A T A like T-A-L-L, -L. Uh, but so I'm going to continue. So I have... Um, there are 30, CD2 partially positive, CD4 positive, CD7, 71 positive or intermediate positive, CD8 negative. Uh, there are negative for uh, B cell markers, 19 and 20, and there are 10 negative. 
And so there, yeah, there's a CD4 positive. And then um, here they're cytoplasmic uh, CD3 positive uh, and they're TDT negative. Um, they're CD1A negative and CD5 partial or the, it's dim. Uh, and then they, they don't have any cytoplasmic MPO. And, and that's it. So I was thinking uh, an early T cell precursor leukemia. Okay, so um, you're because right. But because of the myeloid before, number. So before that, um, when you came here, mm -hmm. you said, like, I know you saw the whole case. I'm, I'm pretty sure you saw the whole case before you came here. But then when you came here, you started saying that you think it is T cell. Yeah. So I just wanted to tell you, like, when you come from the top mm -hmm. until here, there's really, um, I mean, after seeing the whole case, you can say it is TLL because I have cytoplasmic CD3 in there. Yeah. But until here, even myeloids can express CD7, sometimes okay. even bright and homogeneous CD7. So uh, you can see AMLs, undifferentiated leukemias, even erythroid and megakaryocytic differentiation AMLs have been shown to show CD7 to some extent in some cases. And especially AML with um, MRC, AML, MRC, uh, myelodysplasia related changes, they often have CD7. So having CD7 alone does not make it TALL. Okay. But CD7 is needed for TALL. So uh, I know you saw cytoplasmic CD3 and you're biased, but until here, there is really no evidence of any lineage, uh, actually. And it comes only in the next page. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing. Um, uh -huh. Do the do the AMLs um, express that CD13 and the other myeloid marker, which were presented at, at the top? So, um, so it, in here, CD15 was negative and CD13 was negative. Wouldn't that be an enough indication that we're not dealing with an AML? Oh, it can be negative in AML. Okay. Okay. CD15, um, almost always, I mean, I won't use any of those words, sorry. Mostly negative in AML. It can happen. Um, APLs and uh, AML with monocytic differentiation are the ones that often have 15 positive, but the other AMLs are always mostly negative for CD15. I won't say always. Okay. I really, and I think mostly is also not correct. Many cases are negative for CD15. Mm -hmm. And 13 can be negative. That's okay. Even 13 and 33 both can be negative. That's okay too. Okay. So those are... Um, that's what I'm saying, like 13 and 33 are often associated with myelides, but they are not lineage specific. Mm -hmm. Got it. Right. So in this um, one, the only lineage specific marker for TALL is cytoplasmic CD3. We really don't have anything else. Um, not only in my plots, even out there, cytoplasmic CD3 is needed to call it TALL. Um, yeah, and I think she, to call myeloid, you have to be like, MPO is something that you have to like, you know, look for in flow for the myeloid, that is myeloid specific cytoplasmic MPO tube. The right. rest of the markers uh, can be pause negative, like based on differentiation and all those stuff and can be present in others. Uh, may I right. add a few things? I had like, uh, she gave a really good description, but I think the uh, point here is like, it has some um, myeloid marker, like uh, 34, 33 expression is there. Along with it, there was CD7 is bright in it, and it is CD4 moderate positive, and then it is TDT and cytoplasmic CD3 positive. It was, uh, and CD5 is dim to moderate and was less than 75% in the last tube. So I was like, my differential on this, I was thinking of ETP ALL on this one because it has myeloid and it is like CD4 positive, like uh, ALL phenotype. Am I on the right track? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think Halima also was saying the same diagnosis, ETP ALL. Um, she just used the full version of early T precursor. But yes, you both are correct. This one actually qualifies for the diagnosis of ETP ALL. Although um, in practice, most people don't go there unless it is 117 positive or if one of the myeloid markers are bright or bright and like kind of not so partial. In this one, we in our top line, we just called it TALL, but by the WHO book definition, this kind of qualifies. Although I'm not sure if partial CD3, they don't 
talk about how much each marker um, should be. They don't say if it has to be fully positive or um, certain amount of positivity is enough. But if you go by the book, this is negative for 1A, this is negative for 8, 5 is dim, it kind of qualifies for that. So you, you won't be wrong if you call it ETPL. So Although how would you then make it. the diagnosis like on the tissue, like by IHC, then if, if we do not commit on the flow, then how would we commit to it, ETP, ALL, like just combine like both IHC and flow or like how? Uh, to be honest, ETP, calling something ETP, ALL does not really change the diagnosis. Even the WHO says that in the first line, earlier it was thought that uh, ETP, uh, ALL has poor prognosis. And then in the next line, they say larger studies with recent treatments did not show any statistically significant difference. So nobody really worries about it. If you see it in flow, um, characteristically, you can call it etp -ALL, but if you don't have specimen for flow, you're only staining it. If you're calling it just ELL, that is okay. But when you don't have anything for flow, you will definitely stain your tissue for 117. There are no, um, I mean, there are markers for IHC markers for 33 and 13, but I don't know most labs use it. Most labs don't use it. If 117 is positive, you can say that. Okay, got it. Okay, so any other questions? No, that was all, thank you. Okay. Thank you, we go to the next one. Okay, do you want me to continue? Yeah, you can. Okay, um, so for this case, um, let, starting uh, with uh, CD45 site scatter, there, there is this population that is, uh, uh, inter that, that is CD45 positive, but it's less than lymphocyte, which are in green and red. Um, so, I can see that they are um, CD19 and CD20 negative, so negative for the B, B um, cell markers. Uh, there are CD5, so I'm, I'm following the blue population now. There are CD5 negative, CD38 positive, CD10 negative, um, um, and, we, and we said that there are CD20 negative, so I'm not looking at kappa lambda. Um, and then here, um, they are CD34 positive, uh, HLADR positive, 117 positive. I think that 33 is dim or uh, like if, if not partial, it's dim, uh, but it's CD13 is quite bright. Um, and, um, and then there are CD14 negative, uh, 11B negative, 16 negative, 64 negative. And then, um, Finally, there are CD7, um, partially positive, uh, CD1A negative, uh, CD5 negative, CD99 positive, 56 negative, cytoplasmic 3 positive, TDT positive, and MPO negative. So I think, I was thinking it's a TLL because of the CD99 uh, cytoplasm, first of all, because of cytoplasmic CD3, uh, and then um, the early markers of, um, I think the uh, CD99, and I think we, we saw the 34 in HLADR and 117 were positive. Okay, so what would you call this one? I, I was thinking TLL. Okay, so this is a TLL. Yeah. And this is a much better ETP ALL than the previous case because like in this one, there is nothing much. It's just negative for all the B cell markers except CD38. And uh, here it shows a nice 117. You can see the background lymphocytes here. Those are That's how negative looks like. And this one is um, really positive for 117 and 13. This has like more convincing myeloid markers than the previous case. The previous case also had some, but this one is more convincing and 34 is nicely positive. And um, so here is where you can see some normal lymphocytes in the background. So we compare the intensity of cytoplasmic CD3 with this one. These are the normal T cells. So yes, they almost have the same intensity here. Yes, they do, okay. Yeah, and also in this one, we can see that the red cells are the ones that are positive for, um, those are the T lymphocytes. Yeah. And our blast reaches the intensity of the T lymphocytes. Same way before MPO, like the granulocytes are here and our blasts do not have the intensity of 
um, MPO for the granulocyte, so we consider it negative. So both MPO and cytoplasmic CD3, you have to compare it with the normal controls that are there in the background. So this one does have immaturity markers like 34, TDT, CD99, and it has nine, and it is negative for surface CD3, it is positive for cytoplasmic CD3, just like, you know, classic ALL, and it satisfies the uh, criteria, negative for 1A, negative for 5, negative for 8, uh, I failed to show 8 in this one, I should have shown, but okay, but otherwise it qualifies to be a ETP ALL with the 117 and 13. Okay. Yeah. Hey Raji, uh, hey, yeah. last plot in this one. I mean, I was at ETP ALL, but just like this pink population, like really, I was just thinking, like how would you differentiate like from the mixed phenotype uh, phenotype ones? Like since you said like the grands uh, and the blast, like, so is this something like the blast should be at the level where the blue pop, like light blue population is then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To call it MPO positive. So that's the reason we did this too, because it was 117 and 13 positive. We need to make sure mm -hmm. there is no biphenotypic or, um, you know, mixed phenotype. So that's why we have the granulocytes here. The blast should reach here at least, even if the whole thing is not there. So usually in biphenotypic, we often see two populations. One population is positive for MPO and the other population is positive for cytoplasmic CD3. Very rarely they can be positive for both. But whatever it is, it, like this one, like how this is touching the intensity <laughs> of cytoplasmic CD3, that's how intensity you should see. Here it is actually having the intensity same as the lymphocytes. Right? The cytoplasm, I mean, the red cells are lymphocytes. The blasts have... Um, MPO like the lymphocytes. So they don't have MPO in there. Yeah, okay. Any other questions? Um, I was just wondering, why was there, sorry, uh, did, am I, um, did I cut somebody? No, no, you didn't. Okay, I wasn't sure about CD71. Why did we have, why was it there? 71, where is it? Um, maybe, uh... oh, so I think in the previous case. There oh, was in the previous one. Oh, okay. okay. 71 um, is an erythroid marker. Yeah. So sometimes uh, our gates are not clean. And if so, there is something that is positive for 71 and negative for everything else, we know, it, you know, sometimes it creeps into the blast gate. Okay, okay. So uh, let me take this one. So. Actually, when you do your, um, you know, side scatter versus forward scatter and, and find out the singlets, you actually eliminate that area, right? When you draw your gate and then you take only this population. Right. But sometimes yeah. there, there are cells here, um, even this one might have some cells here that actually would be positive for 71 and then nothing else, then we eliminate that. But if 71 is positive, um, that's okay. It's uh -huh. usually positive on the erythroid precursors, but we see them often in other things as well. It doesn't, it's not specific for anything. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, that's the case. Case four. Case four is a mediastinal mass. Um, do you want me to take it? Yeah, you can. Okay. I'm just going to see. I think I wrote some. Um, so we have a CD45, um, like very dim population, and there are 33 negative, 117 negative, 34 negative. They are HLADR negative, 15 negative, 38 positive, uh, 11B negative, and then CD3, surface CD3 positive. Uh, 71 positive. Um, they're showing 71 positive. And then here, um, there's seven positive and two dim, four positive. Um, there are negative for the B cell marker, 20 and 19. They're negative, to, uh, but they're positive. They're positive for CD10. Um, and it's positive for CD8. So both CD4 and CD8 are positive. And then here um, they are, they have cytoplasmic uh, CD3, TDT positive, and CD1A positive, 
CD5 positive, MPO negative. Yeah, pretty much the same thing. When I was looking at this case, this is case three, right? This is four. This is case four, okay. So um, when I was looking at this case, for some reason, I thought that I wasn't, I couldn't, I couldn't put it as a TALL um, because the, I don't think none of the markers are, are, are abnormal except for the dim CD2. Just a, like CD2 is a little bit dim, I think. So I was thinking that it's probably like um, a thymic tissue. No, you, you, you mentioned that it was, it was a lymph node, was it? No, I said it's a mediastinal mass. Med mediastinal mass, okay. Could it be um, based on, sorry, um, if I'm interrupting anybody on this one? No, you're not, it's okay, go ahead. So I, I I don't know. Could it be based on like the co-positivity for CD4, CD8, and loss of CD2, maybe a TPLL or something like that again? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can think about that. I was thinking that it, it is definitely an early T cell um, um, because of the CD1A and um, uh, I think TDT. Um, but I was thinking maybe it's just a no maybe it's these are reactive where there's it's like a, a normal development of T cells because they're 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 in a trail especially CD3 surface is showing like a trail so I, I was thinking as if they're maturing I don't know that's what I was thinking okay so anybody else have we heard about um, normal thymus we heard about PPLL any other opinions okay all right, so I'm going to give you the diagnosis up front and then say why the others we are not considering. This is also a TALL, and this is a mediastinal mass. So this is a TALL arising from the thymus. One reason why this is not a TPLL, TPLL is a mature neoplasm, so you should not see TDT expression in that. So TPLLs can be 4 and 8 double positive. And this one does not show loss of five or uh, it is also positive for surface CD3, two is dim. But all that can look like a um, mature T cell neoplasm, but this clearly has TDT expression, which is not, um, which does not go with mature T cell lymphomas. Other than that, it has CD1A expression and it has a really bright CD10 expression. All those also does not go well with uh, TPLL. Those are also kind of an immaturity marker. So this amount of homogeneous CD10 and CD1A expression you will see in uh, TALS. One other thing why this is not thymus is because it is very static. This population is clustering and it is homogeneous. You don't see anything going towards four or eight here. Thymus is just like a thymic tissue. You will see the population like what you see in hematogons. It will be a more dynamic population. You will see... Um, uh, cells in different stages of maturation, but you don't see that here. I know that CD3 shows a trail, but other than that, you don't see anything anywhere. And the whole thing is positive for TDT. There is nothing really that is losing TDT here. It is brightly homogeneously positive for TDT and 1A. And um, uh, 10 is also positive on the neoplasms arising from the thymus. I mean, TALs arising from the thymus. So all these put together, this is a TALL. The clue is to see for a dynamic population rather than clustering together and static. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, so then we'll go and, to Yeah. And I think the percentage of blast is also an indication towards a lymphoma than in contrast to normal tissue because you should never have 76% blast in the thymus normal tissue, that's what I think. Hmm. Okay. Um, right, I mean, you will see cells, T cells in thymus, but that would be not in the same stages of maturation. I think it's this more of a spectrum. Like, like, right, it's like the like spectrum. It. Yeah, it's four to eight. That graph is important. Then three versus, I think, forward scatters. Look at that. Or three versus five. Look at those plots. If you this see one that, is more like, important, you know, yeah. smearing on those plots, like in this one, it should be like an inverted L. So that would be your clue that it is like from four to like eight, it's going there. Because so. it's probably an arrest of maturation at, at mm -hmm. some stage here. And that's why you have so many, so much increase in blasts. Right. 
is there any condition or situation where we i mean we think that blast more than 20% is normal not that i know of uh can you be louder a little bit i mean what is there any specific scenario where you think that blast percentage of more than 20% is normal in which specimen i mean i was just thinking of anything as aside from the normal hematogons that you see in pediatric population um so normal this... hematogons we don't count as blasts correct like they are normal pre, um, i mean precursors there are there is something called indolent t lymphoblastic proliferation uh, i'm not going to go into that but in the mediastinum or wherever the thymus descends from like somewhere in the cervical lymph nodes it's not in the blood or bone marrow in some of these lymph nodes you can have a lot of cells t cells with tdt expression sometimes in really crazy numbers there is a paper on that so that okay. is considered normal uh, it's people say that you should not call it tal but i'm not going into that discussion but for okay. flow purposes more than actually for lymphoblast we don't go by the 20% rule 20% rule is for myeloids and uh, number 2 flow you should not use it for getting the numbers you should only use it for getting the phenotype the numbers should always be from your morphology yeah that's right that's yes. always there yes but and, this 76% is kind of way above um 20 i mean i mean i i'm okay, hold on hold that... on hold on hold the thought let's do the case 5 and then we'll come back okay Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. This is a media cell mass. This I was thinking of thymus. <laughs> okay. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Shweta. So for me, it's like uh, it's falling in where the mature uh, cell should be in C- uh, size category forty-five. That's fine. Then look at CD three. Fifty-six uh, plus sixteen was for the NK cells, and CD three, like it's kind of that smear that CD three has. that is something i i see in thymic tissue uh, so that raised my suspicion for it and then uh, again like everything like uh, again four versus uh, four is kind of uh, then uh, another plot that i look for is like four versus eight if we have that i mean yeah look at this one too it's kind of you know we see that pattern of inverted l like there is some eight then there is some population four and eight then there is again only four population so uh this kind of these two plots like made me think of thymus <laughs> if i'm right i'll go ahead otherwise i'll stop <laughs> no you you're right you're right this okay. is thymus so yeah those were the two things that like uh i go with then others are the markers that you tell like if it's there or not like uh, just like go, go, looking at this plot like per se this page yeah so it's cd3 is a spectrum 10 i would say some cells uh, might be expressing cd2 is positive and then these cells are 34 negative again 7 is kind of a spectrum again 34 i would say is negative and um uh, i mean rest i would just describe but like those are the plots that like you know just draw attention and i i think it's i just and for time is i just say time it should don't doesn't don't go beyond that yeah yeah okay right so this is time is you're right and um cd45 versus side scatter we really don't have anything in the background to uh, compare it to but we can say it's kind of brighter than what we usually see in the blast and they are all positive for cd2 they have kind of a variable intensity for cd7 but still positive and 56 16 negative 3 like you said it's a smearing pattern uh, so i would like to start with 4 and 8 as well because that's your most revealing plot for a thymus so in thymus the maturation starts with being both 4 and 8 double positive so that's what you see here in the right upper quadrant there are cells that are both cd4 and cd8 positive and then one subset will migrate down being just four positive and no eight and another subset will go this side being just eight positive and no four so we just colored it different the way we wanted but actually the population is just continuous um this is colored by our tech but the whole population is continuous so you have four and eight just four only and then going towards eight only same way for cd5 you have your immature cells that have dimmer cd5 or maybe it started actually with having no cd5 and then dimmer cd5 and then as it matures it gets 
really brighter CD5. And then the red and green are actually the most mature four and eight positive cells. The CD5 finally reaches the stage of uh, intensity of that um, normal T cells, mature T cells. Same way for CD10, it starts with being CD10 positive and then it loses CD10 as it matures. And um, what else? CD2 is pretty the same, pretty much the same. Maybe it can increase in some cases. And then the immaturity marker, CD34, the early stages had CD34 and then they lost CD34 and they gained CD3 and went up like this. So this is how the maturation is. Um, and then again, CD34 was positive and seven was actually brighter in the blast stage. And then it kind of got a, got a little dimmer. And again, uh, this is 10 versus three is also like, um, like this. Uh, it started with being 10 positive negative for CD3 and then slowly, slowly it became positive for CD3. So this is timer. So now we compared this with the next, the previous case, you will know how this population was just sitting in one place one blob and homogeneous, TDT, homogeneous uh, five and uh, seven, homogeneous 10, four and eight is static, just double positive, we don't see anything else. So that's how you differentiate it from the- In yes. that case, uh, in uh, previous case, I think the three, there, it looks like kind of two population. One is it normal, does. one is abnormal. and. It should not be confused with smearing. It's like normal, and then the abnormal has a dimmer CD3 expression. I think that's what it is. Oh uh, no, actually both populations are abnormal. I have no idea why it is like that, but both of them express um, the same. Like both of them had TDT. Um, both of them, okay. them are positive for 10. Both of them are four and eight double positive. And okay. both had TDT. I mean, uh, you're right. We can sometimes see two populations, one mature, one immature. But this one, it was just the immature one. Actually, I saw it in two plots. I think in 34, two also there was in 34 plot there was kind of two, and then the hair it was kind of two. So I just gave. I just thought it might be. But yeah, you are right. In the other plots, they kind of merged together. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's it's just that. It was mm -hmm. a little unusual to see something like that, but, but right, yeah. Okay. Can so we, mm -hmm. uh, for on the on the last case, the thymus, can you elaborate if it were a thymic carcinoma, how would it would be different? It won't be different. You will still see the same. You will see the background composed of the same cells. You have to rely on your A1, A3 for that. Maybe there will be uh, very, very few cells in there, but the background, I mean, if your thymic carcinoma has replaced it, then you won't see much of thymus left in there, right? You won't see much of the normal thymic cells. The, the problem is differentiating normal thymic tissue from TLL. Okay. That's where the problem comes. And for that flow helps. For okay. differentiating thymic carcinoma and normal thymus, you have to go with your A1A3. Okay, so uh, can you just in like a couple of lines, like give me a, dif I mean, a key points that would differentiate it? So you have to use your A1A3. If you see um, the morphology, would you can see some spindle yeah, cells. Yeah, I mean, I mean like TLL and uh, the thymic, I mean, uh, and the normal thymus. Oh, that's the thing I was, um, okay, whatever I said now was on, on that. So basically, in if it is TALL, you will just see a four and eight double positive populations, just static sitting there. It won't really, uh, you won't see a maturation pattern going towards either being just four positive or eight positive. You'll only see <coughs> the four and eight double positive cells. And the whole thing would be positive for immaturity markers. Like for example, here only a small subset is positive for CD34. And you see that continuation with the mature uh, T cells, which do not express CD34. But in the other case, we saw like all of them were positive for TDT and they were like pretty homogeneous. It is one cluster. It's all clonal, one cell population. Whereas this one is more dynamic. You have cells going from being immature with 34 positive, three negative to being mature with just three positive, no 34. And then there are cells from being five negative um, to being dim positive and to becoming five bright and um, um, and the seven brightest to a little bit 
bright uh, normal intensity 7 and they start with being 10 positive to losing cd10 so all these are your i mean they are not so subtle they are like very bright clues for you to differentiate this from tll basically tall will not show a maturation pattern and this one is like thymus uh, like hematogons you will see a maturation pattern that's how you differentiate it. you i have a question raji mm -hmm. Um, thymoma versus TALL, uh, can like uh, thymoma versus mature, uh, like versus normal uh, thymus, is that is that ever differentiated by flow uh, by any chance? Like, uh, how can we say that it is a normal thymus and not thymoma? That part I we mean, cannot say. Thymoma is in the spectrum, like it's, it's the other spectrum, but uh, what about thymoma? No, you cannot differentiate with the help of flow. Right, yeah. No, we cannot. So flow helps to differentiate between normal thymus and uh, TALL. No, but what uh, about, uh, what about uh, like saying this as normal thymus versus saying this as thymoma would be more of based on morphology versus- Yes, ba based on morphology and your A1, A3 staining. Right, A1, A3 will also be, might, might not be positive in all the thymomas, you know? Right, right. It won't be positive in all the thymomas, but flow you can use only to differentiate thymoma and TALL. Only if you're right. lucky that too. Right. <laughs> uh, right. But okay. for uh, differentiating thymoma and th normal thymus, flow doesn't help. You can do that. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. you, can. you can still see um, like cells that you will see in normal thymus in thymoma. Mm -hmm. You can still right. see it, but that doesn't uh, eliminate the presence of the carcinoma component. Right, exactly. Yeah, sounds good. So the problem comes when there is a lot of TDT positive cells and you don't know if there is, this is normal thymus or if it is TALL. That's yeah, when yeah. flow helps. Yeah. yeah, right. All right. So that's all I have for today.